Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, my name is Josh Snipes and if you're just checking out the channel for the first time Make sure to hit that subscribe button because it helps me out a lot and plus you get to watch all sorts of guides Map guides operator guides tips and tricks and videos like this So make sure to hit it hit that bell also if you want to get notifications for every single time a video comes out It helps out a ton now without further ado We're gonna be introducing how to play an operator now how to play an operator is a series that I started with how to play a Bana And I plan to carry out with all of the operators also, if there are any big changes, either nerfs or buffs, I'll make sure to update the information. I've been trying to do comments. It's kind of hard, but I'll at least link the article, the Rainbow Six Wiki, so that way you guys can go see if there's any updates that might have happened that I might have missed also. Now, this series is how to play an operator within a team environment, how you'll play on your team, and sort of the role that you will normally fill on that team. These views are subjected to what I've seen on a Pro League, Challenger League, Go Fours, and how I've seen others play, but I think that overall, this is pretty much what you can expect out of these operators. Now, remember, whether you're running in a 5-stack or if you're just trying to hit up that solo queue, these tips will be relevant to you. And also, one last thing that I like to add is that different regions have different play styles, and different players have personal preferences, but overall, this is how you should play the operator. Now, let's start off with how to play Legion. Now, Legion actually came with Year 2 Season 3, that's going to be Operation Blood Orchid, and he came with the Hong Kong Special Duty Unit, or SDU for short. Now, his partner in crime on the attacking side is going to be Ying, but this is one of the first seasons that we had three operators rather than two. So, Ella ended up being the second defender that we got in that season. Now, Ella and Legion both made a deadly trap combo, and honestly, it made it almost impossible to get into some sites or even get the plant down, especially more so in ranked, not too much in comp, because I feel like comp, they sort of learned how to adjust. But overall, they're still a pain to deal with, more so Legion, because I feel like the goo mines are just so strong still that they haven't really seen too much of a nerf and I'd be curious to see if they just leave them the way they are or if as more operators come into the game we see any changes to them in any way shape or form. Now in terms of where he fits on a team what his role is you can honestly use him as more of a flex or as an anchor. I typically use him as an anchor just because you have eight goo mines that you will get over the course of an entire round and as you get those goo mines they start having a bigger and bigger effect on the round because they do actually stop someone from the ability to plant. If you're playing with the lesion and you get a goo mine you play it in a plant spot you have to pull the goo mine out first before you can even think about getting the plant down and that can save you so much time that can save someone from getting the plant down and it can also make the end of the round a lot easier because you know that they're good they have to pull it out they don't have time to plant honestly one of the most interesting operators that have came out in most recent time because the invisible goo mines just play such a big effect on the end of the round also, one of the big things that I like to point out is it is two speed, two armor, so he does have a little bit more speed than some of the anchors that we see that are normally on site. But I think overall, you're going to be doing a lot more anchoring, but you can late flank with him, and his gun is pretty good that you'll see when we go over it in the loadout. Now, what are the goo mines? What do they do? If you're someone who's just picking up Legion, or you just kind of have an idea what he is, but you don't have too much more information other than that, what is a goo mine? Now the goo mines are these invisible little spikes that you can throw down that open on up on most surfaces. Keyword, most surfaces. There are some surfaces where they won't open up and there's also a tip that I'm going to be showing to show you guys that I think Dingleberries went over in a video and I think it's a really interesting idea. But basically a goo mine is able to trap someone, you'll hear it go off and that's a great indication of where someone is. It is invisible on the floor, it's kind of like the echo cloak where you don't necessarily see it but it's not 100% invisible, you can sort of see like the outline of the invisible goo mine. And lastly, the next thing that it is, is it again, regenerates over time, you don't just get all eight at once. And so the more he's, the longer he is alive, the more and more stronger he gets throughout the round. Now, where does this all fit in in terms of comp? Where does this all fit in in terms of gameplay within the team? He's very, very strong in most, if not every single comp because of the fact that he has an impact and his goo mines are great for stopping plants as well as giving off information. The only tidbit that I'd say is that he can be taken down by quite a few counters that we'll go over later, but I think overall, he's a very strong operator to play in most comp. He's also very good on, on maps like Consulate and Bank where you know they're going to be pushing these certain spots every single time, so if you just sort of pre-play some you'll be able to get someone and know exactly where they're pushing from 
in the map. Now, the one last thing I want to talk about before we go on over to the loadout is that one person he has synergy with with a lot, besides working with the whole team as a whole, is that if you have a frost on your team and you place a Goomon in front of a frost mat and someone lands in the frost mat, you'll end up actually killing that person who hit the frost mat a lot quicker than if you had to run over and shoot them and wait for them to bleed out. And I think the biggest thing to me is that when you hit a goo mine, whether you're standing or if you get downed or anything like that, is that when you hit the goo mine, you take an initial 10 damage. And then for every time you, for the, as a cycle, for every time you don't take it out and that time you're wasting, you'll take another additional four damage of HP for every single cycle it goes through. Now, this is the biggest thing to me because when you're down to like 10, 15 health, you can die pretty quickly if you're in the middle of a gunfight and you can't take this thing out. So just be wary of that when you're droning. Try to see if you can find goo mines and not run into them because it does give off a lot of info as well as you do take some damage with it. Taking a look here over at the loadout now, we're going to be taking a look at the two primaries first with the 612 SD and the T5 SMG. Now, when given the option, I would not use a 612 at all. It's not a very good shotgun, semi-automatic, sure, but given the fact that someone could keep you at range and you're going to be stuck with a pistol, it's not a very good primary to be running. Now, the T5 SMG is a submachine gun that has a very good rate of fire as well as a high capacity magazine it has so much damage for an smg and it doesn't have that much recoil you can take down pretty people pretty quickly and i think that overall it's one of my favorite smgs in the game now i will typically run a hollow along with a comp on this but i think that the comp and flash is kind of a personal choice because it depends on if you're trying to take longer engagements you might want to run the flash just for the burst fire but if you're running at maybe closer engagements or you know you're going to be trying to keep those a little bit closer, you might want to do the comp just so that way you have a little bit more rapid fire to play with and it doesn't kick up too much. Now you have one secondary to choose from. There's a Q929. The pistol's pretty good. I definitely would try to stay away from using it just because it's probably one of the more middle of the road pistols in terms of recoil and the accuracy. The iron sights on it are very nice so that's actually a very good plus because most of the time you need to be shooting for heads anyways with the pistol because it doesn't do too much damage or none of them really do besides the desert eagle or the magnum and lastly the gadgets you get besides your goo mines is going to be the impact grenades and bulletproof camera now bulletproof camera is usually only a good choice if you're running on a coordinated team and you know where exactly you're going to put that bulletproof as long with someone sort of strats it out but honestly if you're playing in ranked if you're going to play in lower comp just messing around and go fours or whatnot Definitely just bring the impacts. I think having those impacts makes a lot easier because you can use it on the site. You can sort of set up what you need to set up. And if you're going to be running lesion, you might be using those for opening above, opening a hole, maybe later into the round. So I think that you should definitely stay wary of that, but you don't always need to run impacts depending on your team's comp. Now, who actually counters all these goo mines that are being thrown? There has to be counters, right? Well, before we get into tips and tricks, let me go over some of those. IQ is a big one, obviously she detects all electronics on the defending side. If she's above or below, she will be able to see the goo mines. She'll be able to see them actually when they're getting thrown out, so in midair, and see where they land. She can shoot them through the ground as long as the ground is permeable to be able to shot through. And Thatcher is also another big one. Those EMPs will take out any goos within the vicinity of the EMPs radius. So do be careful where you put it. If you put it next to a wall, trying to make sure that it's not going to get EMP'd. Either put it a little bit farther away from the wall or just wait for that wall to get open. Finally, for the EMPs to not really have any effect on it. Now, you can shoot the goo mines if you see them. You cannot melee them. If you try meleeing them, they will go off. Twitch's shock drone also will be able to get goo mines. And again, drones are able to see it a little bit easier because they're sort of on that same level of the ground that a goo mine would normally be. So Twitch's drone being very strong for that, along with any grenades or explosives that are on the attacking side, such as frag grenades or even Zofia's impacts, will be able to get rid of these goo mines. So if you put them in barbed wire, do be careful because they might be able to get impacted and then not be affecting on that round. Now, heading on over to the tips and tricks of this video, this is actually the first one that I wanted to mention, and I just figured it out and like kind of realized that this should be a tip because I thought maybe a lot of people knew this, but just in case you don't, I'm hoping that this will actually help someone when they're trying to learn how to play Legion. Now, when you're playing Legion, you can actually see the goos when you die. And I, I mean, you can't see them if you're on someone's first person view, you can't see them, but if you're on a camera, 
you can still see them. You can still see the icon. You can't necessarily see the outline and everything, but the icon at the very least will be there for you. So let's say you know where you place all your goos and you're trying to help your teammates out. You're running on cams and you hear one go off on the staircase. You call that out because you see the icon disappear on your screen and that'll help your team out, teammate out a lot because honestly, I was trying to think of tips for this video and that's one of the biggest ones to me is the fact that you can still see them when you're dead and being able to call all that stuff out can help your team more and more because information is the name of the game. Now for the next tip that I have for you guys is actually going to come on sort of an interesting angle I feel like and I feel like on consulate more so this really helps out. Now if you put a goo mine inside of a window like you see me doing here if someone repels onto the window they will actually trigger that goo mine and have it stuck in their foot but you can't take it out while you're repelling so you either have to repel all the way down or go up to the roof and take it out. Normally I would say go up to the roof don't repel down because if you repel down I'm going to try and jump out on you most of the time depending on how look at the 5v5 beginning of the round or anything like that but you might risk a lot doing so. Now you're going to see here this is just the other side of what you guys just watched and pretty much this is going to be what it looks like and I think the biggest thing to me is that you can see it on an IQ gadget but most people don't expect this when they're trying to repel onto a window. So if you're trying to counter a Blackbeard or someone trying to do an upside down repel, this could be very, very useful and it's a big nuisance when you're trying to play on the windows and trying to get kills on the windows because you do take damage as you can see here. Again, that 10 damage and the 4 ticking will really have an effect on you so do be careful if you go up against a team that might like to do this. Now as for my next tip, this is just a really quick one like I was talking about earlier, is that if someone puts a goo mine down and you try to plant, you can't plant if you step on the goo mine and you'll see this here it doesn't even give you the option because normally my f is so that i can hit the diffuse but instead i have to take this goo mine out which would save you seconds and even a whole round if you're able to get someone with that goo mine going into the latter part of the round now for the last tip that i have for you guys some of the things that you can do with these goo mines is actually as you're seeing here i've opened up the floor completely but you can make a little punch hole and throw these through if you have a big enough hole but for whatever reason some surfaces are able to put goo mines and others aren't so i figured i would just mention this really quickly because honestly it's a really useful tactic because if you put it in the floor it's a little bit harder to get and people might not look down to actually try and get it and then end up stepping on one but some surfaces in between the floorboards you can put these down others you can't and obviously these are only the ones where you can actually shoot out sort of that top floor level that you see all here now I used his shotgun to do so but normally you can just make a little punch hole like you're trying to see me do here unfortunately this one didn't work either but just play around with different spots if it doesn't end up working out just pick it up you can normally just pick it up so it's not too much of an issue but anyways guys thank you guys so much for watching I hope these tips were useful I hope that the gameplay and things that you guys see in the videos are also useful if you have any questions or if you want to make a tip for someone else who I might not have added some of the tips. There's so many things that a lot of people like you are super smart know that I don't necessarily know or things that I didn't think that other people would mention or like for me to mention. So make sure to mention it down in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe. That's going to wrap things up for today. Stay tuned because I'm coming out with another one. Also, I'm coming with another how-to in the coming days. So make sure to watch out for that. But anyways, guys, that's going to wrap things up for today. And this is going to be Josh Snipes signing off.